नमस्कार आप देख रहे हैं एनवी न्यूज़ मैं हूँ प्रिया वाजपेयी आज हम पहुँचे हैं लखनऊ के हयात में जहाँ चल रहा है इमोशनल स्ट्रेस पर लेकर एक कॉन्सर्ट एक इवेंट जहाँ पर हमारे साथ मौजूद हैं तिब्बत के प्रोफेसर और पद्मशी से अवार्डेड प्रोफेसर स्टिम चलिए बात करते हैं उनसे और जानते हैं कि आखिर हम लोग कैसे इमोशनल स्ट्रेस को ओवरकम कर सकते हैं जो हमारी ज़िंदगी में बहुत ही ज़्यादा हम लोग को डिस्टर्ब कर रहा है तो चलिए सर से बात करते हैं सर अराउंड इन द कंट्री अराउंड द वर्ल्ड देर आर मैनी पीपल हु आर सफरिंग फ्राम स्ट्रेस लेवल देर आर थ्री टाइप ऑफ स्ट्रेस इन चिल्ड्रेन इन मैरिड कपल्स तो हाउ दे कैन ओवरकम द स्पेशली फॉर द मैरिड कपल्स दे आर अनेबल टू मेनटेन अ रिलेशनशिप कॉर्डिनेशन तो वॉट आर योर टिप्स फॉर द मैरिड couple who are suffering from this sort of stress that they can't manage with their partners hmm uh, you see uh, the tips for the uh, marriage couples i think uh, their union should be uh, not based on selfishness because marriage is a very kind of a, uh, wholesome kind of union uh, that men and women can come together and uh, actually they become i they should become identical uh, not expecting or being selfish but uh, they should uh, be a supplement to each other once they are into that state of uh, complementary kind of state then there should there will be no problem at all the problem that arises is uh, because uh, the each you know partner emphasizes on one's own kind of well-being without uh, having concern of the you know the both persons and the other person it always seen in a relationship that sometimes a man uh, becomes very much dominating and women is unable to control and the what's uh, what they can do to control a man because in each and every relationship there are some people around the world who uh, they used to say ki are they used to say my husband used to dominate me on each and every issue mm -hmm. so how the woman can uh, come over from them so she should uh, skillfully develop some means to you know make him understand right and of course uh, the dominating attitude is not fair not not uh, kind of and this is uh, prevalent in some sections uh, at some point of time but now it is obsolete and one should not be dominating on other right so one have both has the equal kind of uh, status and they should work together to you know to carry forward the the union of the these two persons uh, and to nurture the 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 family in future right and so used to say that people in the world and even i also think us i don't know where the stress arrived from because sometime in the morning i feel like what the hell is this i want to end this so how how we can overcome from that because we do, we don't know from where the stress or tension or anything has occurred in our mind <laughs> yes this it mostly happen with the youth No, no, no. Not only you. Even with children, there is lots ah. of stress. Stress comes in your mind. You take it up. You take the, you know, stress, and then uh, it is developed in mind, and then it comes at some cer certain point of time, unmanageable, beyond, ah. you know, manage. Definitely, we yeah. unable to manage the stress in the morning. Sometimes, like it will, what the what the bloodiest thing? It's unable to happen. You who need that? What? what what we can do to overcome from that so that i have been speaking about you know to watch your mind and then how to tackle those situations your mind should be uh, you know in in a, prepared to um to confront those situations in a more uh, peaceful manner and uh, not in a very aggressive manner but uh, with the peaceful attitude if you can uh, manage it without being selfish but having concern for others then certainly the stress can be reduced now in america the uh, more than 54% of police officers have uh, gone in are burned in a burned out situation depressed situation now with the training of uh, you know mindfulness they are you know uh, cured and they come out of that stress it is through meditation it is through you know working on your mind you can come out of that stress and, and always you can said that uh, it is always said that buddhist is a that sort of religion where people used to very cool and calm but around the world you was already know what is happening around the world so what do you want to what do you want to take and what are your takes on that what do you think that what all, all, all is happening in india or america or iran or what all is happening we can't live a peaceful life because buddhist is always used to be 
said as a region where people are calm you always used to say to people that be calm be cool but around the world you all know you have seen the world is not being calm right now yeah. because uh, we have not been paying attention to our you know the internal world the world of mind and then how to you know make our mental state that can uh, cope with the present situation so that is why we need to pay more attention on our mental state how to you know develop uh, strength within ourselves with the patience with the compassion and uh, with the control on the negativities with these things once these things come into our education system then the problems issue will be the issue of this all thought will really end yeah yeah certainly it, it, there is no you know one kind of uh, uh, measure that can immediately instantly wipe out these problems they have uh, grown up uh, in course of long time uh, due to education system due to societal systems and things like that now we need to address these things uh, at the mental level last take what you want to say on how to how can people cure their emotional stress because in today's what emotional stress is a very big thing yes of course that is what i have been saying that uh, emotional states can be you know um, cured or in the negativities or depressed states say you know, one can come out of that only through training of mind and practice how did you enjoy it india oh yeah i'm and lucknow I'm, Yeah Lucknow I'm enjoying it's a Nawabian culture you know I'm enjoying thank you thank you the lay person a very lowly educated will also understand because they live with that and they love to be to you know be being loved right say for example the those who do not believe in religion they also like to be loved they love others they like you know kind hearted people they like to be peaceful so they accept all these values when they are you know introduce these values of course these are wonderful things that we need in our daily life so it is quite common uh, to public in general that uh, they can we have a understanding kind of medium through which based on our own experience right good afternoon Good afternoon, sir. Just a minute. I think I'll just speak a little bit on what she had asked. Okay. Because uh, as from experience, we from the uh, from my NGO, I can ask, we have developed two books so far. The first book is the Ethics of Restraint, and we have introduced it. We've been running it in our school for two years now, and it has very practical exercises. In fact, it's like the Bible for all of us. So, for all of you who are interested, I can supply those books. So I'll just give you two examples. Uh, for children, we conduct two kinds of exercises on anger. Uh, that's one of the examples. So we first make them sit and peacefully, and we uh, tell them that okay, just imagine a, a situation in which you are very angry, and you bring yourself into that situation and get angry, and just uh, look at your state of mind. So they sit peacefully, and they, we keep telling them, okay, get angry now. You're getting very angry. You're getting ready to shout. You're getting ready to throw things. And then later on, we ask them, "How did you feel?" And then they realize that they're feeling heat in their body. They were disturbed. Their mind was upset and things. And then we also tell them that uh, in the past few days, have you ever been angry? And then the children would say, "Yes, yesterday I was very angry because my rickshaw wala was late, or my shoes were not polished." And that your rickshaw wala, what was their reaction? So he said, "They also yelled back. My mother was ready to slap me. Why don't you do your own work?" so then we tell them okay now today when you go home don't be angry just say it nicely mom you didn't uh, set my bag according to the timetable and then tomorrow you come back and tell us what is the reaction so when children go through these exercises they realize the difference that when they are angry what is the repercussion and when they are uh, dealing in a patient way and a loving way what is the reaction and the reaction on others and the reaction within their own bodies so they start changing and this is the first thing which the children are enjoying and uh, really uh, they are affected is in containing the anger because this generation we find is very very angry so you know these are small school children and uh, according to their training the trainings which we've been through and the books uh, we are doing this so you can you know even with your um, uh, like i apply it on my staff also now 
एंड द डे ही इज मेड अ मिस्टेक माई कुक विल स्टार्ट अटैकिंग क्या करूँ बोझी ये था वो था ऐसा ऐसे काम डाउन क्या हो गया देन इमीडिएटली द एंगर हो गया सो यू नो यू हैव टू नॉट स्टार्ट लेक्चर बट स्टार्ट मेकिंग दम रियलाइज द डिफरेंस दे कैन ब्रिंग अबाउट वेन दे आर हैंडलिंग समथिंग एंग्रली और वेन दे आर हैंडलिंग समथिंग पेशेंटली ओके सो डज इट आंसर योर क्वेश्चन थैंक यू Good afternoon, sir. Uh, just to diversify this thing, uh, actually, uh, this topic of ego has come up. I always get confused. There's a marginal difference between ego and self-respect. So, when to decide uh, that the self-respect has turned into ego? So, what exactly is the difference? If you can elaborate, sir. Yes, this is a very good question uh, from the cognitive point of view. Self-respect. Uh, um you see the very thin line but uh, sometimes uh, people don't uh, you know just uh, remain to that uh, thin line but uh, draw a big gap between them right so ego is something unrealistic right? self respect is realistic right? so these are the parameters on this basis if you think that i must have a, a self respect self respect on the basis of the in the basis of your real reality your status your situation or whatever and again now how you look in look into your status your you know position your qualification your you know many things right if you look into this for example if somebody has a position for this position is a great i should be respected by others so again the ego comes right so it should be your perspective should be realistic and if your you know perspective is realistic then the self respect won't go into the domain of ego but often it goes into the domain of ego right if you are realistic then you can uh, one can have certainly one must have self respect right but uh, when it uh, enters into the domain of ego then that is a negative kind of addition any more questions or uh, should we oh, yes the last question this last two days one we'll just take one or two questions yeah. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, in practical terms, uh, when your own relations, your siblings, or your parents uh, have deceived you in some way or betrayed you in your in your legacy or your emotions, uh, then how to deal with it? If you forgive and forget, you're called cowardly. Uh, if you fight back. it's a bad situation in the family yeah so in practical terms how to deal with it so you may apply those things that i had spoken earlier we in terms of you know application and practice of patience there is no domain demarcated to family members and to outside family members right so you have to of course in terms of your emotion the domains are different but uh, you know, but uh, you can see if again if you react then there would be further deterioration of the situation right so try to understand the situation and then you know if you can uh, if you can intelligently and wisely address the issue if that requires to be addressed then you can do that without any grudge of you know uh, anger or you know, hatred but uh, once the anger and hatred comes into the picture then that is going to be totally negative right so here patience pays a lot so it, as i said there are very these are very complex kind of you know things to do and the situation is also quite complex so you must be you know smart enough intelligent enough to handle these things right diligently and uh, practice of patience should be there 
But uh, patience does not mean that uh, you have to succumb to any kind of situation. You can handle it rationally, you know, reasonably, if it is required to be, to, to you know, uh, to face it, but uh, with the compassion, right? So then that will, you know, take out all the negativities out of that, but you can at the same time address the situation, right? Yes, sir. last question. So Gandhiji has done that, right? Gandhiji has done that. So many of the great masters have done that. One thing that we should, we must do with such situation is that differentiate between the person and the afflicted mind, mind, you know, uh, mentality, right? Action and the person should not be, you know, uh, identified together. They, his or her action should be analyzed, having compassion on the person, and then try to rectify the actions of the other person, right? And uh, bring it on the, you know, on the right track. track. So, to, to do that, that, you need lots of, you know, competency in the development of uh, morality and ethics. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you for the wonderful gems. Um, so, as many of us women here who are working, we would probably... I think this is not working. Can you hear me now, sir? So a lot of women here who are working women, we are dealing with a lot of staff yeah. and they have issues of punctuality, discipline. So these are recurring issues and it affects the quality of work. Yeah. So even if I apply, say, compassion on a, on a regular basis that these are the people who have to come by buses, yeah. we are traveling by cars, it's raining today, we have to go to the doctor, etc., etc., like you said, which I do apply a lot in my uh, work. But uh, how to deal with anger in such situations where it is justified, we feel, because a lot of other staff are coming on time, delivering, and you know, how you compare and how do you react in such situations? Thank you. Good question. Um, your son has, has uh, written a book on art of happiness, and then it was, uh, you know, sold as a hot take for several years, for over a decade. And uh, uh, you know, they translated it into 38 languages, and uh, so so many people got transformed. Then many people wrote to him and his co-author that uh, we are in working, yeah. and uh, the your art of happiness is uh, a kind of uh, you know um, gives advice uh, for general application, but. Uh, Kindly decide a book um, that can that addresses particularly people at work because we have a different uh, you know problems at work. So then, His Holiness the Dalai Lama and the the, 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 um, the co-author uh, wrote a book on um, art of happiness at work, <laughs> precisely addresses that. And it is, you know, very important that to what you have said. Uh, we, once we say that, uh, suppose you have given a lecture to your colleagues, be compassionate. And the next day when you, you know, um, instructed your colleague to come on time, and yesterday you were saying you're compassionate, you're, today you are not compassionate. So what happened? So compassionate should not be misconstrued. That's very strong, I think. You should be compassionate, but you should be strict to bring the people and make the people ethical. Right? To come late, not working at the, in the office, are unethical. By advising them and bringing them on track, it's also not only good for the organization, but good for the person who thinks of or herself, so that they can become more ethical. So with your compassionate attitude, you are actually being concerned for not only for the you know, whole organization, but also your, you know, uh, expressing your concern for the concerned person, right? So that can, so that he or she can, you know, become a better person and punctually work, you know, sincerely in the office 
right? So that will make a further kind of contribution to the organization if you are strict, skillfully, compassionate. So compassion should be always clubbed with the wisdom, right? So what about my own anger? <laughs> 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 yeah, so, yeah that, that's true. So at that time, again, you have to apply those things that I had mentioned, you know, that uh, anger should not be allowed to come in. But uh, instead of anger, if you develop compassion, that would be more effective on the, you know, on, on the person. If you uh, show anger and express anger, that may not be effective, that much effective, but uh, that may not be, on the first instance, not effective, but uh, on the other hand, it might adversely affect your mental state also, right? So, be compassionate and patiently bring the people on track. So, once you had, uh, <coughs> in one of the workshops, sir had advised, another teacher had asked, that when other students and all. So the difference is that sometimes you show anger, but you don't allow yourself to get angry. Can you understand the difference? Like if you get angry, then it affects your being and you lose control over yourself. Uh -huh. So you show, sometimes you show your anger, but you don't let it affect you. So th there is a difference. Okay. So at your workplace, sometimes you need to yell at somebody or show that you are angry. But you are not letting it affect your inner self, so that you are in control of yourself. So in Tibet, uh, there is a saying that uh, a great compassionate uh, a master uh, can have a wrathful face to bring the you know, pupils on track. So you can have that, but a wrathful face should not have a you know, um, fearful mentality behind that. Okay. So I think today we have received the blessings of a guided spiritual teacher as uh, Professor Santo and uh, we are truly encouraged to uh, practice the spiritual path of realizing who we are, dealing with our negative emotions, their destructive part and I think mindfully connect with something that is uh, more greater, vaster and deeper than just our own individual self and uh, I'd like now like to call our uh, the Flo Lucknow Senior Vice Chairperson, Pooja Garg, to give the vote of thanks. Thank you. What a truly rewarding session. We were spellbound listening to such an eminent speaker, scholar in our midst, who gave us a glimpse of the Buddhist belief system. Listening to him, we were transported to a place where peace and tranquility is a way of life, where non-violence was not an option but an imperative. He made us believe that hatred, animosity, misunderstanding and strife has to be encountered through positive mentality, through patience, through compassion and through love and kindness. He guided us on how to go beyond boundaries and use principal tenets of Buddhism so beautifully propounded by His Holiness the Dalai Lama. We thank you again, sir, for taking time out to address our members and guests and broadening the horizons of our consciousness by using our emotional intelligence. I would like to thank our chairperson, Mrs. Madhuri Halvasya, for envisioning this event. Our event chair, Mrs. Neeta Modi, who made it all possible. And our MC for the day, Mrs. Ratina. I would like to extend our gratitude to our sponsors, Kanna Jewelers, M&N &M Designs, Beer Cafe, and Curry On Restaurant. I would also like to thank Hayat, our hospitality partner, Annie Zedi, our event wizard, and especially our events team, headed by Vandita Agarwal, who works vigilantly to execute if, uh, each event flawlessly. A big thank you to our members for making this event a success and a very warm welcome to our new members who have joined our wonderful <coughs> Flow family this January. Thank you so much. Thank you.
देश विदेश से लेकर आसपास की सभी बड़ी खबरों को सबसे पहले देखने के लिए सब्सक्राइब कीजिए न्यूज एंड व्यूज को